What's up, everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel, Ink and Grow Rich. For this debut episode, I thought I'd just give you a quick crash course in commercial storyboarding. Hopefully, this will leave you with a pretty good sense of how these episodes will unfold in the future and offer up a little taste of my teaching style. Jesus Christ, I met some dumb bastards in my time, but you outdo them all. You repel me. I think you're going to love it. All right, so I thought I would kick things off with a very, very simple Nissan spot I drew up last year. This commercial was meant to advertise their Summer of SUVs event, and it featured their entire lineup of SUVs. For the purposes of this debut tutorial, I'm just going to focus on a Pathfinder segment. I, I think it gives us a good introduction to my general overall workflow as a perfect example of how I would tackle an average storyboard gig. So the first thing that's going to happen is I'll be given a script for the spot we're going to draw up, a director's treatment, which is essentially a PDF a director puts together at the beginning of every job just to outline his thoughts on how he'd like to shoot the spot. I'll get some location photos, so I know what environment we're going to be drawing in. Then I'll get a director's shot list, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a list of shots that the director's hoping to get from me. For this particular spot, in lieu of a shot list, the director drew up some very loose sketches for me. This doesn't happen too often because when people can't draw, I think they feel a bit self-conscious about sharing their little chicken scratches, especially with a professional artist. Like two hobos f***ing in a shoe filled okay. with piss. But honestly, I absolutely love it when they do it because it eliminates any miscommunication and just makes my job a thousand times easier. So you can see here that this sequence is made up of just two shots. The first is a 180 degree wrap around, starting on our front three quarter, ending on our rear three quarter. As we're wrapping around, we can see these two hikers approaching from camera right and arriving at the Pathfinder. In the second shot, we're gonna continue that left to right wrap around, but we're gonna punch in tighter, so we see the hikers open up the hatchback and load up their gear. Now, I'm going to create a separate video in the hopefully not too distant future, which will go into far more detail in each one of these. For today though, I'm just gonna breeze over everything because I just wanna give you a general roadmap of how I see these future tutorials unfolding. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do here is very, very loosely sketch out the shots. I'm doing this even though the director sent me his doodles, simply because I'm gonna be building off these initial sketches while I'm drawing up the final art. His sketches do a great job of communicating his thoughts, but the proportions and perspectives are way off, so I can't really use these as my foundation. And for wide shots like these, I like to start with the horizon line so I can get a good idea of the environment and start mapping everything out. After I do that, I can drop in the other elements and figure out where they're gonna live on the page. So this third frame, we've reached this rear three quarter position. And our hikers are a bit more prominent in the frame. I'm just gonna be very roughly, I'm just gonna very roughly indicate their position here. I can get away with this being so loose because I'm really just looking to get confirmation. So for this third frame, we've reached the rear three quarter position and our hikers are a bit more prominent in the frame. I'm just gonna very roughly indicate their position here. I can get away with this because I'm really just looking to get confirmation from the director on the blocking and the composition. Okay, so now we've got our preliminary sketches roughed out, which gives us a pretty solid idea of what the final boards will look like. At this point, I like to shoot the rough sketches over to the director and get his thoughts. Shortly after sending those roughs out, the director called and essentially said, hey, looks great, move on to the next stage. Now, that is a bit unusual. More times than not, there's always gonna be some minor tweaks or small revisions that'll be asked from you. Because the director went through all the trouble of pulling together those rough sketches early on, we managed to avoid any of that with this job. So, with the director's approval locked down, we're gonna move on to the final art. Okay, so now the fun starts. Once I've got the story roughed out and the camera angles, composition, the blocking have all been approved, I'll go online and I'll start pulling together as much photo reference as I can. I don't do this beforehand because I don't want the reference that I find to influence the storytelling. On this particular job, there's no real danger of that happening because the director's got a pretty firm idea of what he wants, but it's not uncommon for them to leave a lot of the storytelling up to you. And when they do do that, I, I prefer to rely on my own storytelling skills and not be led in the wrong direction just because I happen to found a cool photo here and there. The first set of photos I'm laying down are shots of the 2019 Pathfinder. Next, I've got a bunch of photos of hikers that I found on Getty Images. This isn't something that I need to do, I'm perfectly capable of freehanding this, but we live in an age of the internet where you can find virtually any picture online in seconds. It's an incredible resource and in my opinion, it'd be foolish not to use it. It makes my job easier, it results in a higher quality storyboard, so why wouldn't I? If you've got an ethical problem with tracing, I would strongly recommend you get over that very quickly. 
Okay, so now the fun starts. Once I've got the story roughed out and the camera angles, composition, the blocking have all been approved, I'll go online and I'll start pulling. When it comes to reference material, sometimes you're not going to be able to find the exact photo you need, such as this trunk full of hiking gear. Rather than spend 30 or 40 minutes going down that rabbit hole of looking for the right photo, I prefer to just photo bash it. So what I'm doing right here is just grabbing some hiking gear from various photos and dropping them in where I need them.
So for this guy here, I decided to just freehand him rather than waste my time looking for reference photos. So first thing I'm gonna do is use a super loose sketch of this guy putting his bags in the car. Next, I'm gonna reduce the opacity on that layer, create a new layer over it, and this is where I'm gonna be drawing the final art. Okay, so now I've jumped over to Photoshop because there are a few brushes here that I like which don't yet exist in Painter. The first brush I'm using is a fine rake. This is one of the newer brushes that comes with Photoshop versions 2018 and higher. It's part of Kyle T. Webster's rake brush set. I'm just trying to throw out some texture on the ground here and up on this rocky hill. Next, I'm using a custom brush I built for more ground texture. 
Okay, next up, I've got a series of custom grass brushes. I created this set by just hand drawing several different clumps of grass and then making brushes out of each of them. The reason I'm not using one of the many grass brushes you could find online is that I want all of this to have a hand drawn look. So I start with the first brush, and as I'm dabbing away on the screen, I'm simultaneously tapping the angle bracket on my keyboard, which is toggling the brush forward. This way I can get a bit of a variety of my grass shapes and keep it looking organic. Here I'm using a custom leaf brush that I built to add some sparse foliage throughout the scene. By the way, if you're interested in any of these custom brushes, I'll provide a link below where you can download them for free. Selecting a lighter shade of gray, I'm now going to select yet another custom brush and start painting in some highlights in the foliage. Now I'm painting in all of my arrows. I like to draw the arrows in red so they pop off the page. I used to draw them in black and white, but I found that they'd occasionally get lost in the art, so red works much better for me. For this final stage, I'm going to go back in and shade it all with some grays. This isn't something I do too often anymore because it's been a recent trend with directors I work with to eliminate it, but this particular director appreciates the shading, so I've gone ahead with it. This is probably the least time consuming part of the whole project.
All right, so that just about wraps it up for this episode. Shortly after shooting these final boards over to the director, I got final approval for the art. So this job has been put to bed. I hope this video has given you a pretty good idea of my overall workflow. If there's anything here I did that wasn't clear, if you got any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining, and would like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Until next time, this is Vinny Delay with Ink and Grow Rich.